Welcome back to the Amateur Extra License Exam Study. We are going over part 31, that sub-element 7 Bravo. I have a little bit of experience with amplifiers in the Class A and Class B. I used to build guitar amplifiers, tube amplifiers. So hopefully I'll be able to give somewhat of an explanation of some of the stuff that you're going to see here. Question one says, for what portion of the signal cycle does each active element in a push-pull class AB amplifier conduct? The answer is more than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. And here we go. If we go up here to a class AB amplifier, let's just go ahead and go all the way to the top. This is an operating point right here. And the operating point is somewhere between max voltage and the minimum voltage. There's always current flowing through this circuit. So it's very inefficient, but it is very linear. And when you hear the word linear, it means very little distortion. Linear means that it produces an exact copy but with, you know, gain, of course, but an exact copy of what the input signal is. So when we go to a class B amplifier, a class B is also known as a push-pull. And what happens is one side conducts, then the other side conducts. So it creates a pretty good image of what the input signal looks like. The problem with that is there is a little bit of a crossover distortion. So when the when the voltage hits this point, both transistors are going to want to start doing their thing about the same time. So it causes just a smidgen of distortion right here at that crossover point. A class AB is like the best of both worlds. So what it does, and the question that we're answering, it conducts for anywhere between 180 to just under 360 degrees. And when you put both of these together, you don't get the crossover distortion because there's a little bit of bias on the input. So these are a little bit better in terms of linearity. A class C amplifier is a whole nother animal altogether because it is biased below its output point before it starts to conduct. So it outputs less than 180 degrees. A class C amplifier absolutely requires some output filtering. And the output filtering completes the rest of the signal. It's it's pretty wicked rad. And th now you can take a look at all of them together right here on this chart. You have a class A, very linear. A class AB, not as linear, but pretty close. The other, the other half completes the rest of the, the input signal. And that's the same with the rest of these. There's, there's usually two parts to it. Um, class D through T, I can explain that. They use switching technology and lots of filtering. That's how those work. Uh, they are very digital. And a lot of power amplifiers for RF are digital, and then they use those output filters. Uh, class C is, is not digital. It is strictly analog for the most part, and you have to have filtering for that. So I hope that sheds a little bit of light on this. So the AB amplifier conducts more than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. And remember, I mentioned class D through T are digital. So an amplifier that uses switching technology to achieve high efficiency. Class D and above are, are super efficient but they're also not something we're going to be building at home real easy. <laughs> what circuit is required at the output of an RF switching amplifier? Switching is a bad thing in terms of noise. 
So you have to have a filter to remove harmonic content. Uh, when you have switching power supplies, how many people complain about a switching power supply? You know why? Because they're inherently noisy. So you have to filter them. So if you see the word switching, that is going to be needing some harmonic filtering. All right, so question four. What is the operating point of a class A common emitter amplifier? Uh, let's see. Do I have? I don't think I have a common emitter, but I do have a common collector. So you can see that I've been reading a lot, even though I knew something. I was looking for something for you. This one is a common emitter right here. Uh, no, this is common collector. Sorry, common collector uses the emitter as the output. So on this one, it's talking about a common emitter instead of a common collector. So the emitter is going to be ground. Okay, so the operating point of a Class A common emitter amplifier is that they approximately halfway between saturation and cutoff, just as I showed you over here on the Class A amplifier, the operating point is between saturation and cutoff. Now I called it max voltage, no voltage. It's pretty much the same thing, saturation point and uh, cutoff. Those are the legit terms. What can be done to prevent unwanted oscillations in an RF power amplifier? That is to install parasitic suppressors and or neutralize the stage. And neutralization is providing some kind of negative feedback. So unwanted oscillation, oscillations is to suppress it or neutralize. That's what you want to do. And that's the only answer that uses suppressor and neutralize. So hopefully that helps you out with unwanted oscillations question. Should you get this one particular question on the test? Remember, you're only going to get one from this section. What is a characteristic of a grounded grid amplifier? A grounded grid amplifier has a low input impedance. And this is what a grounded grid looks like. This, when you hear the word grid, we're talking about tubes now. And a lot of power amplifiers are still tubes to this day. Now we are starting to get into some MOSFET stuff, but this is a grounded grid. This is the grid right here. The control grid of this tube is grounded. And this is a grid too. The grids are the dash lines. And there's two grids in this. And, you know, I, I haven't messed with one of these in a while but uh, I never built one of these. They're different. These are for RF. They, do, they, they really work well for RF. But the grid is grounded. That is how that works. So they have a low input impedance. That is what makes grounded grid so nice. Which of the following is the likely result of using a Class C amplifier to amplify a single sideband phone signal? You're going to get signal distortion and excessive bandwidth. So if we go back to that Class C, do you remember the Class C? Class C has, has lots of distortion because it's not it's not outputting the entire wave. So these are more for RF. They're not used for audio. If you want to if you want to amplify audio, you would use either A, A, B, or B. Or audio can also be done with these amplifiers, but these really are for for pushing some some wattage. So um, class A, A, B, B, those would be the best. But that getting back to the question itself, which of the following is the likely result of using a Class C amplifier for that SSB phone signal is going to be lots of the distortion and excessive bandwidth. Why are switching amplifiers more efficient than linear amplifiers? That is because the switching device 
is at saturation or cutoff most of the time. And then it uses that filtering. So let's go back down to the, the big picture. See how it's either on or off, on or off, on or off. That's very efficient, but it takes a lot of filtering to uh, get all of that noise off of that. So switching device is at saturation or cutoff most of the time. That is why switching amplifiers are more efficient than linear amplifiers. That's also why switching power supplies are more efficient than your linear su power supplies that use, I mean, they're always conducting. They use a lot of power. Uh, a lot is an overstatement, but they are using power continuously, whereas a switching power supply, it, they can be somewhere between 90 and I think 95% efficient. What is characteristic of an emitter follower or common collector amplifier? These are known as a unity gain amplifier. They're also um, impedance matching. The input and output signals are in phase. And that's why I had this one pulled up, the common collector amplifier. Notice the common collector is up here. And what goes in is the same as what goes out. But the gain of this is known as about one or unity. So it's a follower. A voltage follower. All right, so that's why it's called a follower. Input and output signals in phase. Okay, now to some tough stuff here. In figure E7-1, what is the purpose of R1 and R2? It, from your basic electronics, this is a voltage divider. If you recognize it as a voltage divider, then you'll know that this is voltage divider bias. This is what biases this transistor in between or halfway between saturation and cutoff. So what goes in comes out. And this particular amplifier, just for extra knowledge, inverts. So if it goes high over here, it's going low over here but this is very linear. In figure E7-1, what is the purpose of R3? R3 is a self-bias. It's a, it's a different, it, it's a little bit different, but what this does is it brings the voltage level or the uh, ground potential up just a little bit from ground so you don't have a hard hit on the end of your uh, signal. These help produce a little bit more linearity in the amplifier. This is called self-bias. R3 and C3 put together are a filter of sorts. So you can go check that out on your own if you want to learn about how to make amplifiers. Replace this with the tube and then you have a class A output and this, this is class A. Alrighty, what type of amplifier circuit is shown in figure E7-1? Now you have to look at where your output is and what is grounded. It, you can ignore these two and just pretend that this is, this is grounded, but this is your output. So this is a common emitter. It's not common base or grounded base. It's not common collector because the common, your ground, the common is the emitter. Well, hopefully my explanations of all these types of amplifiers and the types of circuits that it takes to build them has not confused you too much. Go and take this one uh, another watch if you need to study this section again. There's a little bit to learn, a little bit to think about. And I preface this by saying this one's a little easier for me because I've done it. But I hope and wish you the best in your studies. We're on the back backside slope of this big old hill now. So I wish you the best, 73. Don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to the channel to show your support. And if you do not want notifications, you just turn the bell gray, put a slash through it. But it's free and it helps me. I'm W1RCP72.